Hi, I'm Eric Siegel with Eric'sTrains.com. Today we're going to be taking a look at a new three rail O scale legacy equipped two truck Shea locomotive from Lionel. I'm going to start things off with a little history and information on the Shea itself. The Shea is a geared steam locomotive and that means that unlike a regular steam locomotive where the pistons directly drive the wheels, on a geared steam locomotive they use gearing and specifically they use reduction gearing to drive the wheels. And this gives the Shea a distinct advantage over a regular steam engine in the applications for which they were used. And those include logging operations, mining operations, and other industrial operations where you had steep inclines, tight curves, and poorly laid track. The best analogy I can think of to help explain this is a bicycle. When bicycles were first invented, they had the pedals on the front wheel. So one turn of the pedals equaled one turn of the wheel. That was a direct drive system, just like on a standard steam locomotive. And that's okay, except it makes it very hard to get up a steep hill, especially if you have to start in the middle of the hill. You have to put out a lot of force to get over that hill with a direct drive bicycle. And it's the same with a steam locomotive. For a direct drive steam locomotive to get over a hill, it has to put out so much force that it would eventually tear up the rails. And so with bicycles, that's why eventually they invented the geared bicycle. Because with reduction gearing, it makes it easier to get up that hill, even if you start off in the middle of the hill. And as any of you who have ever rode a bicycle know, it's much easier to get up a hill on a 10-speed bicycle than on a 1-speed bicycle because the reduction gearing on the 10-speed bicycle makes it much easier to get up that hill. And it works exactly the same way with a geared steam locomotive. The Shea locomotive takes its name from the last name of its inventor. It was invented by a guy named Ephraim Shea in the late 1800s, and Shea's remained popular on logging and mining and other similar types of railroads well into the 20th century, and they began to fade out around the same time that steam began to fade out in favor of diesel. Now, fortunately, many Shays are still around today that have been preserved, and many of those are still operational, such as number three for the Cass Scenic Railroad, which is what this model is based on. So, now that you know a little bit about how the real Shays work, let's talk about this model. Lionel first offered the legacy-equipped Shea in their 2011 Volume 1 catalog, and it's appeared in every catalog since, so they've been making these for a few years. However, this is not a brand new tooling. It's not even a Lionel tooling. For some of you who have been in the hobby for a while, this may look a bit familiar. That's because Lionel has reused the tooling from the old K-Line Shea back when K-Line was still making trains. And of course, as most of you probably already know, K-Line went out of business a few years ago and Lionel acquired some of their tooling. So now they're making the old K-Line Shea under the Lionel name. But of course, they've upgraded this with the latest legacy command and sound packages, which is cool. The road name on this particular Shea is the Cass Scenic Railroad up in West Virginia, and Lionel put this model out in 2012. But since 2011, they have put these Shays out in a multitude of different road names, so chances are they have the road name that you're looking for. Also, Lionel has put out two different versions of this Shea. They've put out a legacy command control equipped version like what you see here, and they've also put out a classic conventionally controlled version as well. But for this review, I'm just going to focus on the legacy equipped version. Let's go over some quick stats and facts for this model. The length is about 13 and a half inches. It weighs five pounds, eight ounces. It has about one pound, five ounces of pulling power. And the minimum curve needed to operate this engine is 031. Under the hood, the Shea is powered by one large flywheel motor, but that motor powers both trucks because of the gearing system that the Shea utilizes. The engine is also equipped with Lionel's legacy command system as well as legacy rail sounds. There are three ways to operate the Shea. The preferred way is to use Lionel's legacy command system because that will allow you to get the most out of the engine in terms of features. But you can also run the engine using Lionel's classic TMCC command system or you can run the engine conventionally. This model has loads of great details and features so let's go ahead and take a closer look. The pilots on this engine are fairly simple, but then again, the pilots on the real Shays were pretty simple as well. We do have some nice step detail here, some separately applied grab irons, as well as a separately applied coupler cut bar. And then, of course, in the middle, we've got an electrocoupler that can be fired from the Legacy remote. 
The place where this model really shines is here with all this drive gear. And what's cool is that all this gear moves when the engine is in motion. And as you can see, it looks fantastic. And just like on a real Shea, even though the gear is moving really, really fast, because of the reduction gearing, the actual Shea is moving relatively slow. And what's even more special is that all of this gear is not just cosmetic. For the most part, it's functional because the motor that drives the engine is here in the middle. And just like on a real Shea, through a series of gears and universal joints, it drives the wheels on both of these trucks. So the way that this model moves is not too far off from the way a real Shea moves. If we take a look at the front of the engine, up top we've got an operating headlight. Below that, there's a separately applied metal handrail that goes all the way back to the cab. The front of the boiler is nicely detailed, including this nice nameplate. And then, as an added touch, the front of the boiler swings open like that. Here's a look at the engineer side of the boiler. It's nicely done with some cast-in details, as well as some separately applied piping. There's also a separately applied legible builder's plate, and in this case, it indicates that the engine was built by Lima in April of 1923. Here's what the fireman side of the engine looks like, and obviously you don't have the fancy running gear like you had on the engineer side, but there is a good mix of cast-in and separately applied details, as well as another legible builder's plate right here. The cab and tender sections of the engine are very nicely detailed. We've got clear plastic inserts on the windows, nice rivet detail all around, a nice crisp logo here, and separately applied metal grab irons and ladders. On the inside of the cab, it's pretty cramped because of all the electronics, but there is a detailed back head as well as two hand-painted crew figures, and the inside of the cab is lighted. On the back of the Shea, we've got a reverse light right here, a separately applied metal ladder, and nice casting details all around here. The rear pilot is just like the front pilot. It's got separately applied metal grab irons, a metal coupler cut bar, nice step detail, and of course, an electrocoupler that can be fired from the Legacy remote. On top of the engine, there's a smokestack with an operating smoke unit inside, and of course, to load smoke fluid into the smoke unit, you just pour the smoke fluid directly down the stack. Behind that, there's a sand dome, and then behind that, we've got a little bell that swings back and forth, and there's a little wire lanyard attached to it that goes back to the cab. Moving back, we've got some nice brass pop-off valves here and the whistle here, and then behind that, we've got the dynamo generator, and then on top of the roof, there's a vent that opens up like that. On top of the tender, there's a coal pile featuring real pieces of coal, and if you lift up the coal pile, it reveals the master controls for the engine. You've got the smoke unit on-off switch, the run program switch, the Odyssey speed control on-off switch, and the master volume control. And then behind the coal pile, there's a little water hatch that opens up like that. Here's a look at the underside of the Shea, and from here you can get a better look at the mechanics of all that running gear. You can also see the nice spoked wheels. We've got two pickup rollers, one on each truck. There are two traction tires on the rear truck, and the speaker for the sound system is right here. Okay, the last thing we're going to do before we start this engine up is BFIMO, best feature in my opinion. In my opinion, the best feature is sort of a no-brainer. It's all of the great drive gear action on this engine. From the crankshaft to the universal joints to the drive shaft, all of this stuff moves when the engine is in motion. You'll see it in just a minute when we start this engine up. It's incredible. There's nothing else like it. So in my opinion, the best feature is all that great mechanical action. Okay, now it's time for everyone's favorite part. Let's go ahead and start her up. And as usual, I'm going to use the optional extended startup sequence, which is activated by pressing and holding the start button on the Legacy remote. Let's start things off with some sound effects. Here is the always great Lionel Quilling Whistle. Here's the bell sound, and you know, I don't mention this very often with these Legacy equipped engines, but if you use the Legacy remote, you can either do a single hit of the bell or a continuous ringing of the bell. So if I just want to hit the bell once on the Legacy remote, I just do this. And if I want to, I can hit it a bunch of times like that.
like this. And it's like I'm in the cab ringing the bell myself. Or I can do a continuous ringing of the bell by pressing and holding the bell. Like that. Pretty cool. Here's the sound of water being loaded into the tender and that's activated by pressing and holding what would be the three button on the legacy remote. There's also a steam blowdown sound, which is activated by pressing and holding what would be the six key on the legacy remote. And of course, there's the always controversial crew talk sounds, which some people like and some people hate. I happen to like them because even though they are not very realistic, they are a lot of fun. So let's go ahead and give them a listen. Okay, let's go ahead and roll it out. Now, ordinarily, I would carry some log cars behind this Shea, but at the moment, I don't have any log cars. I'm planning on getting some in the future, but for now, I'm just gonna run the engine by itself.
Okay, that about does it for this review. This is a great little engine that I'm happy to own. And even though right now I don't have a logging railroad anywhere on my layout, this thing is so cool. It almost makes me want to put a logging camp somewhere on my layout. That would be really cool. Maybe I'll do that sometime in the future. If you're interested in purchasing this engine, they retail for just under $900. Although if you go through a good Lionel dealer, you should be able to get a decent discount off that retail price. And as always, if you're looking for a good Lionel dealer, try my favorite train store, which is Legacy Station. You can find them on the web at www.legacystation.com or give them a call at 770-339-7780. Anyway, that's it for now. I'm Eric Siegel, and I'll see you next time.